Don't you hate it when YouTube reviews don't actually install and use the product? They just read from you from the data sheet? I know I do. Today we're here talking about the new Secure RAM EOS. We're gonna review it and tell you what we think. Uh-oh. Now here's a problem. I'm Robert, you're watching Locksmith Recommended. The new Secure RAM EOS comes in black, which is a new trendy finish by a lot of hardware manufacturers. Also comes in a silver. They've been making electric safe locks for oh, a dozen years or so. We like their product on safes. We reviewed another deadbolt called the Secure Ram Touch, and this is their latest for home residential market, the Secure Ram EOS. Now, why would you buy this over the Secure Ram Touch? The Secure Ram Touch that we talked about had a hub that plugged into the wall, and then you connected the deadbolt to the hub. Secure Ram also makes window and door sensors. Those require the hub. So if you're using the hub for other products, including the access control on the safes and the control of the safes from the cell phone, then you're going to want to stick with the secure RAM touch because it's going to take advantage of the hub that's already there. This one is Wi-Fi requires no hub. Also comes in at a very good price point, cheaper than most of the other smart locks out there. I'll put a link to the Amazon product down below in the description if you want to take a look. The other thing that the secure RAM touch has is a high security key. Now I love the high security key because it gives you protection. However, customers were complaining because they couldn't just take it into a big box store and make a copy of the key. If you do want one that you can just take anywhere and make a copy of the key, the Secure Ramp EOS is going to be the product. So we're gonna take a look at it. We're gonna run down all the features for you. We're gonna look at the app. We're gonna tell you what we like about it and what we don't like about it. I did install this product. If you wanna see the installation video, I'll put a link to that down in the description below. What I did like about it when I got it out of the box is I did like that it had these three and a half inch screws that go onto the strike. So here, here it is sticking through the strike. The strike part goes on the frame of your door, the three and a half inch screws tag into the two by fours. So if they try to kick down your door, instead of just breaking the frame, they gotta break those two by fours. The strike itself isn't the best quality, but having these three and a half inch screws gives you a lot of added strength. Another thing that I did really like about this that I noticed out of the box is on the fingerprint scanner itself, it's at an angle. So instead of being flat against the door like most of them, it's at an angle, which is very easy to use. You walk up to the door, you throw your thumb down, you throw your finger down, you're naturally at that same angle. The ones that are actually horizontal, you actually have to get down there and get your hand and crank it, and that makes them harder to use. So having that angle, which they also have on the Secure Ram Touch, makes it a lot easier to use the biometric features. During that installation, I did find at least one thing I didn't like, and that was that the deadbolt itself has a little plastic spindle in it. I'm not sure how well that's gonna hold up. Now this is a brand new lock on the market. Secure RAM hasn't yet got this rated, so it has no ANSI rating or BHMA rating. So we're gonna have to see what they do with that and whether or not that plastic spindle is gonna cause them problems in the future. They do plan on getting it rated, it's just too new, and so they haven't gone through the process yet. Let's start taking a look at some of the features of this lock. This is a biometric lock. It has a fingerprint scanner. You can also get in with a keypad. You can use a key override in a case the batteries ever die. It also has a jumper for a nine volt battery. It'll take up to nine users. Each user can have two fingers enrolled in the system. When you set up a new user for this, the fingerprints are optional. You can just set them up with a pin code. That's a nice thing to be able to skip because if the person you're setting up access to isn't there, you, do, you can set up the lock anyway. Some smart locks require them to be there, require the fingerprint. That's a nice feature. It'll tell you whether or not your door is open or closed, and it'll provide an audit trail so that you can see who entered the system and when. There's a couple other things I like about this. One of them is it is voice activated, so it sort of guides you through the install process. It also allows you to issue single use pin codes. If you want somebody to get in one time, one time only, you can issue a pin code that after it's used, it expires. And that pin code could have a set duration. So if it's not used, it's going to expire after so many hours anyway. The batteries on this lock slide in through the back. This just lifts up. If you want to replace the batteries on your Secure Ram EOS, you just slide the cover plate off. There's four AA batteries underneath there. You pop those in and you are all set. Battery life on this, they claim to be about six to eight months. And lastly, this will work with Alexa and Google. So it is set up and ready to go for that. If you're using either of those, this should be able to be controlled from those devices. 
Now let's get this set up to work with my phone so that we can show you some of those things. Now I already downloaded the app. First thing you need to do on the app is add the device. So I'm gonna go through that process now. In order to wake this lock up, you have to swipe the keypad. So I'm just gonna add this device and follow the prompts. Now it is gonna give me some voice indication here, so I'm not gonna to talk too much. I want you to hear what it's saying. Add user press to pair phone. Enroll the administrator first. Add, you, add user, enter code. Verified successfully. Enroll the administrator first. Place first finger. Lift fi place finger. Lift place finger. Finger enrolled successfully. Place second finger. Enter new code then press check. Repeat new code then press check. Operation successful. Owner. Added successfully. I've added myself as the administrator. It enrolled me as an owner. This lock, you can enroll people as owners or visitors. Owners have access 24 seven all the time. Visitors, you'll be able to disable. So if you're going on vacation or something, you wanna just make sure nobody can get in your house, you can just disable their codes and they won't be able to get in. Let's just test this real quick, see how it works. Recognizes the fingerprint nice and easy. In order to lock it back up, you can touch any key on the keypad or hit the silver button. Locked. And it tells you that it's locked, so you, you have no doubt. Now, one of the things with the pin code is you can put digits before the pin code and after the pin code. So long as the pin code's in the middle, it'll actually activate the lock. So if you have somebody looking over your shoulder and you don't want them to see what your code is, hit a couple digits before. I put in a code of 1111, let's try it. So I just did a couple random digits before I did my code. So it's hard for somebody to remember if they're looking at the lock. That's actually a carryover from a feature on their safe. Now we need to pair this to the phone so I can control it with the Wi-Fi. Before I do that, let's go ahead and add a user and we'll add a visitor user. In order to get into the menu mode, you just hit the gear icon. Add user, press two. Add user. Please log in as administrator. Enter code. Verified successfully. To add owner, place your finger on the reader. To add visitor, press zero button. Visitor, place first finger. Now here's, I'm gonna skip the biometric enroll by hitting the gear icon again. Enter new code, then press check. Repeat new code, then press check. Operation successful. Visitor. So I enroll. So I enrolled a visitor and I didn't do the biometrics because maybe they weren't there and present, but I did issue them a new code. So now I have a visitor enrolled in this lock and an owner. Now let's go ahead and connect the lock to the phone so I can monitor it and control it from the phone. Okay, so here it is on my phone, the EOS. I gotta connect to that. Now, full disclosure here, I had to do this and enter this lock several times before I actually got the EOS uh, transmit a signal from the lock. I basically had to exit pairing mode and go back into pairing mode several times. So if you run into that, just keep at it. It does eventually work. All right, now it looks like I'm paired to my phone. It's told me the operation is successful. All right, now let's take a look at what we have here. So from the main window, I can see that my lock is locked and it is, the bolt is out. I can see the strength of my signal to the lock and I can see the charge on the battery. And let's open that up and let's see if this works. Let's unlock the lock. Tap it. The first time it does this, it's gonna ask you if you're sure you wanna unlock it. Now you could just turn that off. I'm definitely gonna turn that off because I don't wanna be prompted with that every time. And it asks you for your code because I'm changing the settings. And don't ask again. So as added security, you can have to put the code in. So if somebody's got your phone, they can't unlock your door. My phone screen locks anyway, so I'm not worried about that. So I just abled all those features. And you can see that I did in fact unlock my door and I can lock it. Locked. Now you can see also here that I have a device history and it tells me that I've remotely unlocked the door and locked the door. So you have an audit trail for this lock that you can view from the app to see what's going on. Now let's go take a look at some of the settings. Let's take a look at the users. Uh-oh, now here's a problem. You're not able to add users from the app. I wanna be able to do that. If I have an app, I wanna be able to add users and just set a pin code for them. I know I can't enroll them 
with the fingerprint, but I wanna be able to just set a pin code for them without having to go to my lock to do that. You are not able to do that from this app. So that's a ding, I don't love that. So just be aware of that. To add users, you're gonna go out to the lock. The most important thing is you can delete a user from the app. You see the delete uh, trash can here. That's very important because if you wanna disable access right away, boom, gone, they can no longer get in. Certainly do that. So here's the list of the users. Changing code will allow you to change you as the administrator's code. You also cannot, from the app, go in and change user codes. So changing codes, adding users, got to be at the lock. A little inconvenient. Yeah, I don't love it, but it's it's you can live with it. The other settings I want to look at are under the more button here. Here's the one visitor disabled. So I set that visitor code. I use 4444. Let's go ahead and disable the visitors. So now I'm on vacation. I disabled all my visitors. Somebody comes to my house, puts in 444. And they get that message, visitors restricted. So that's a quick way to, to group the users of your lock and disable a set of users all at once. The next feature I want to talk about here is the auto lock door sensor. If you saw my install video, you saw me set this up. If you didn't, take a look at the link in the description below. But this is a little magnet that you would actually put on your door frame. And when you put it on your door frame, you put it within three eighths an inch of this sensor. Now I don't have this on a door frame, so I'm just going to touch it just like that. And I'm going to turn on my door sensor. I'm going to enable it and save it. And what this has done for me, if I go back to my main screen now and I'm looking at the status of my lock, what it tells me here now is that it's locked and closed. So I know that my door is secure. So if somebody leaves your house and they've left your door open, you come into your app and you can see that your door is unlocked and your door is open. I love that piece of information. The only other lock that does that for me is the Yale, which I also love. So this is a great feature at this price point. Fantastic feature to have in this lock. If they've closed your door, but they forgot to lock it, you can also see that your door is closed, but not locked and go ahead and throw it in lock. Let's go back in the settings. And you can also use Alexa or Google. And this is how you set up Alexa or Google uh, here as well. All right, let's talk about this little compartment right here on the front. Now this is uh, a little hard to get open. You need fingernails to get this open. I don't have fingernails. I do have a screwdriver, so let's pop this open. This pops out and rotates. And underneath here is where you have your override keys. You also have two jumpers here for a nine volt battery. So if you don't have the key with you, you can run the store real quick get a nine volt battery, jump that. That gives you just enough energy to take a code or a fingerprint and open the lock for you. So what do you think about this lock? The price point's attractive. Do you like the features? In terms of best smart locks, still like the Yale that we recommend. I'll put a video uh, where we review the Yale, the Quick Set, and the Schlage down below. But at the price point, you get a lot of great features for this, and you get the door sensor. So I think it's a great lock at the price point. I do want to see them get this ANSI rated, get it lock rated as soon as they possibly can. I'd like to see that them do away with that plastic spindle. And for heaven's sake, secure RAM. Add the capability to add users from your phone, at least with code access. I mean, that's a very important thing. It's a feature that I love. I don't want to have to go to my lock to do anything. If you have any comments, leave them below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. You get notified every time we do a new video. If you want to check out the install video, I'll put a link to it at the end of this. I'm Robert. You've been watching Locksmith Recommended.